Welcome, dear travelers, to abyss of horror, where shadows dance and whispers beckon you closer. Tonight, I invite you to ponder a question, one that may haunt you long after this tale is told. Have you ever felt your own will slipping away as if something else, something unseen, was pulling the strings? Our story tonight follows a young woman who finds herself entangled in the delicate threads of fate. Her life no longer her own. But beware, what you are about to hear may leave you questioning who or what truly controls your actions. Gather close, let the darkness draw you in and listen well. For tonight, we delve into the tale of the puppet strings. Emily had never been particularly close to her distant relatives. They were the kind of family members you only saw at funerals and weddings, brief encounters filled with awkward small talk and forced smiles. So when she received a package in the mail, marked with the name of an aunt she barely remembered, her curiosity was piqued. The package was old, the edges worn and frayed, the brown paper wrapping it crinkled and discolored with age. There was no return address only a name scrawled across the top in faded ink. Aunt Margaret. Aunt Margaret? I barely remember her. Emily frowned, trying to recall the last time she had seen or heard of her Aunt Margaret. It must have been years ago, long enough that she had nearly forgotten the woman existed. With a sigh, Emily tore open the package, peeling away the layers of paper to reveal a wooden box, intricately carved with swirling patterns that seemed to move if you looked at them for too long. Inside, nestled in a bed of yellowed tissue paper, was a marionette. The puppet was old, clearly handmade, its wooden joints worn smooth from years of use. Its face was painted in soft, delicate strokes, a smile that seemed both welcoming and sinister at once. The eyes, bright and blue, were unnervingly lifelike, almost as if they were watching her. Ah, I've never liked puppets. They always felt... wrong. Emily shivered, setting the marionette down on her coffee table. She had never liked puppets. There was something about them that felt inherently wrong, as if they were more than just carved wood and painted features. But she couldn't deny the craftsmanship that had gone into this one. The detail was exquisite, right down to the tiny stitching on its clothes and the finely coiled strings that connected its limbs. There was a note at the bottom of the box, written in the same faded ink as the package. Emily unfolded it carefully, the paper brittle beneath her fingers. Dearest Emily, this marionette has been in our family for generations. It was passed down to me from my mother, and to her from her mother before that. Now, it is your turn to care for it. Treat it well, and it will do the same for you. Love, Aunt Margaret. Emily frowned at the note. There was something odd about the way it was worded, as if it was more of a warning than a gift. She looked back at the marionette, now sitting innocuously on her coffee table, its painted smile unwavering. For a moment, she considered throwing it away, or at least tucking it into a closet where she wouldn't have to look at it. 
but something stopped her. A strange compulsion that she couldn't quite explain. Trade it well, and it will do the same for you. The words echoed in her mind as she picked up the puppet, its wooden body cool and smooth against her skin. She moved it tentatively, pulling on the strings to make it walk, its little legs swinging back and forth with an eerie fluidity. There was something almost mesmerizing about it, the way it moved so naturally, so lifelike. But as the day wore on, Emily found herself growing more uncomfortable with the marionette. Every time she glanced at it, it seemed to be in a slightly different position than she remembered, as if it had shifted on its own. Once she could have sworn its head had turned to face her when she wasn't looking. Those bright blue eyes staring directly into hers. That's it. I've had enough. By evening, Emily had had enough. She decided to put the marionette back in its box and hide it away, out of sight and out of mind. But when she tried to move it, her hands froze. She couldn't bring herself to touch the puppet, as if an invisible force was holding her back. The smile on the marionette's face seemed to widen. And for a moment, Emily thought she saw its tiny wooden fingers twitch. Get a grip, Emily. It's just a puppet. Shaking off the irrational fear that had taken hold of her, Emily tried to convince herself it was all in her head. But the feeling of unease lingered. And that night, Emily found it difficult to sleep. I kept hearing noises soft creaks and whispers that I couldn't quite place. Every time she closed her eyes, she pictured the marionette, its painted smile taunting her, its eyes gleaming in the darkness. Finally, after what felt like hours, I drifted off into an uneasy sleep. The next morning, Emily awoke feeling groggy and disoriented. I had vivid, unsettling dreams that I couldn't fully remember. Flashes of movement of strings being pulled, of a voice whispering in my ear. She tried to shake off the lingering dread as she went about her morning routine. But something felt off, as if she were moving through a dream that she couldn't quite wake up from. When I walked into the living room, I froze. The marionette was no longer on the coffee table where she had left it. Instead, it was sitting on the armchair across the room, its head tilted slightly to the side, to the side as if watching me. Emily's heart skipped a beat. I knew I hadn't moved it. I had been too afraid to even touch it the night before. So how had it gotten there? Her mind raced, trying to come up with a rational explanation. Maybe I had moved it and simply forgotten. Or maybe it had fallen off the table, and I had subconsciously picked it up and placed it on the chair without thinking. But deep down, she knew that wasn't true. With trembling hands, Emily picked up the marionette and put it back in the box. I've had enough of this. She was going to take the puppet to the nearest antique shop and sell it. Get rid of it once and for all. But as I closed the lid of the box, I felt a strange sensation, a tugging at the edge of my consciousness, as if something was pulling me back. The marionette's eyes seemed to bore into her, and she couldn't shake the feeling that it was pleading with her, begging her not to leave it behind. It's just a puppet, I reminded myself again, but the words felt hollow. There was something more to this marionette, something dark and malevolent that she couldn't explain. With a sense of mounting dread, I locked the box and shoved it into the back of my closet. I didn't want to see it, didn't want to think about it. But no matter how hard she tried to push it from her mind, the image of the puppet's smile lingered in her thoughts, haunting her. That night, I dreamed again. In the dream, she was standing in a dark room, the only light coming from a single dim bulb hanging from the ceiling. The walls were lined with mirrors, each one reflecting my image back at me. But something was wrong. 
My reflection was moving on its own, its limbs jerking and twisting in unnatural ways. As she watched, horrified, her reflection reached up and pulled at the corners of its mouth, stretching its lips into a grotesque grin. The smile widened and widened until it split my face in two, revealing sharp pointed teeth beneath. Her reflection's eyes glowed with a malevolent light, and it began to move toward her, its limbs still jerking in that unnatural, puppet-like way. I tried to scream, but no sound came out. I was frozen, unable to move, unable to look away as my reflection reached out and grabbed me by the wrists. She could feel the cold, wooden fingers wrapping around her skin, the strings tightening around her arms. And then I woke up, gasping for breath, my heart pounding in my chest. For a moment, she lay there in the darkness, trying to shake off the lingering terror of the dream. But when I reached up to wipe the sweat from my forehead, I felt something cold and rough against my skin. She looked down and screamed. There, wrapped around my wrists, were the marionette strings coiled tightly around me like a snake. The marionette itself was sitting on the edge of her bed, its head cocked to the side, its smile wide and sinister. I tried to pull the strings off, but they were too tight, digging into my skin. I thrashed and struggled, but the more I fought, the tighter the strings became, pulling my arms up and forcing me to move. The marionette's eyes glowed in the darkness, its smile growing wider as it watched her struggle. You can't control me, I thought desperately. You're just a puppet. But the marionette seemed to have other ideas. Slowly, methodically, it began to move its own limbs, and as it did, I found myself mimicking its actions. I stood up, my body moving against my will, my arms and legs jerking in that same unnatural puppet-like way. No. She whispered, trying to resist. But her body refused to obey her. I was no longer in control. The marionette was pulling the strings now, and I was just a helpless puppet. With a sickening realization, Emily understood what was happening. The marionette wasn't just a toy. It was something more, something evil that had been passed down through my family for generations. And now, it had chosen me as its next victim. She had to get rid of it. She had to break free. But no matter how hard she fought, the strings only tightened, pulling her closer and closer to the marionette. She could feel its cold, wooden fingers pressing against her skin, its smile inches from her face. You won't win, she hissed through gritted teeth, but the marionette only smiled wider. And then... With a sudden jerking motion, the marionette forced her to sit down in the armchair, her limbs going slack as the strings wrapped around her body, binding her to the chair. For a moment, Emily thought she had won. The marionette was still, its strings taut and unmoving. But then she realized with a sickening dread that she was no longer in control of her own body. The strings had taken over completely, and she was trapped, a prisoner in her own flesh. The marionette's head tilted to the side, its smile widening to an impossible degree, as if it were mocking her. And then, slowly, it began to move, its limbs jerking and twitching as it stood up from the bed. She tried to scream, tried to call for help, but her voice was gone, swallowed by the darkness. The marionette reached the door and paused, its hand resting on the doorknob. It turned its head to look at her, its eyes gleaming in the dim light. And then, with a final mocking grin, it opened the door and stepped out into the hallway, leaving Emily alone in the darkness, bound by invisible strings. Days passed, or maybe it was weeks. Emily had lost all sense of time. She was a prisoner in her own home, her body controlled by the marionette, forced to act out its every whim. She no longer felt like a person. She was just a puppet, her will no longer her own. 
The marionette never left her side. It watched her constantly, its eyes following her every move, its smile never fading. It seemed to take pleasure in her torment, in the way it manipulated her like a marionette on strings. She tried to resist, tried to break free, but it was no use. The strings were too strong, too deeply embedded in her mind. She was trapped and there was no escape. One night as she sat in the armchair staring blankly at the wall, she heard a noise. Soft footsteps growing louder as they approached her door. For a moment, hope flared in her chest. Maybe someone had come to help her, to save her from this nightmare. But when the door opened, her heart sank. Standing in the doorway was the marionette, its smile wide and malicious, its strings taut and ready. No, Emily whispered, her voice barely audible. Please, no. But the marionette didn't listen. It stepped into the room, its limbs jerking and twisting as it moved closer. It reached out and grabbed her by the wrists, its cold wooden fingers pressing against her skin. And then, with a sudden sharp pull, it yanked her out of the chair, forcing her to stand. Emily tried to resist, but the strings were too strong, too deeply ingrained in her mind. She was helpless, a puppet on strings, and the marionette was the puppet master. It began to move her, forcing her to walk across the room, her limbs jerking and twitching in that unnatural, puppet-like way. She could feel the marionette's presence in her mind, controlling her every move manipulating her like a toy. And then, with a final mocking grin, the marionette forced her to open the door and step out into the hallway, leaving her home behind. Emily's life became a blur after that. Days bled into nights, and nights into days as the marionette controlled her every action. She no longer knew who she was, no longer had any sense of self. She was just a puppet, her strings pulled by an unseen hand. She tried to fight, tried to break free, but it was no use. The marionette was too powerful, too deeply embedded in her mind. She was trapped, a prisoner in her own body, and there was no escape. But deep down in the darkest corner of her mind, a spark of hope remained. She knew that the only way to break free was to destroy the marionette, to sever the strings that bound her to it. And so, one night, as the marionette forced her to walk through the darkened streets, she made a decision. She would fight one last time and she would not stop until she was free with a sudden burst of strength emily yanked at the strings pulling them away from her skin the marionette's eyes widened in surprise its smile faltering for the first time but she didn't stop she kept pulling kept fighting until the strings began to fray and snap. The marionette let out a low, guttural growl, its eyes glowing with anger. It lunged at her, its wooden fingers clawing at her skin, but she fought back, tearing at the strings with all her strength. And then, with a final, desperate pull, the strings snapped, and the marionette fell to the ground, its limbs limp and lifeless. Emily stood there panting, her body trembling with exhaustion. She was free, finally free. 
The marionette was nothing more than a lifeless doll, its power broken. But as she stared down at the marionette, something strange began to happen. The puppet's body twitched, its limbs jerking and twisting in that familiar puppet-like way. And then slowly, it began to stand, its eyes glowing with a malevolent light. Emily's heart skipped a beat as she realized the truth. The marionette was still alive, still in control. And now, it was angrier than ever. With a final mocking grin, the marionette lunged at her, its strings wrapping around her body, pulling her back into its control. And as the darkness closed in, Emily understood with a sickening dread that she would never be free. The marionette had won, and she was its puppet forever. Dear Travelers of the Abyss, As we leave Emily's tale behind, a question lingers in the darkness. Have you ever felt the strings tightening around you, pulling you towards something you cannot escape? If this story has left you trembling in the dark, remember to like and subscribe. And in the comments below, Share the word that best captures your fear. A word that sums up the horror of losing control. Of becoming a puppet on someone else's strings. Until next time, when we once again descend into the abyss of horror.